Hey guys, I'm Marty. Welcome back to the next part in the C++ SFML 2 to Popper tutorial series. I hope you guys have been having a good summer. I sure have. It's been busy as heck out my way. Wow, Marty, you don't code all the time. I don't do programming 24-7. I like to do a lot of things. I like to go fishing. I like to play guitar. There's a ton of fun stuff I like to do in the summer. Plus, my dad needed me to help him out with a lot of construction, stuff like that. So there's a lot of work to do. We got most of it done. Okay, here's the game where we left it last time. As you can see, it looks pretty much like the very second last tutorial. But the only difference is we've created this framework here that's the entity class. So in this video, we're going to be creating the player class using vertex arrays, which is going to be much better than just having a square blob. Okay, let's get started by going control in. We're going to create a new document. We're going to start with a hashtag, not dollar sign, hashtag pragma once. It's a statement that makes sure that this header file only gets copied once. Then we're going to go hashtag include and I'll some angular brackets. Angular brackets or quotations both work fine. It doesn't really matter. You could use both. And we're going to go graphics and end it with a .hpp extension because it's a C++ header file. Right, and now we're also going to want to include our own library, which is the entity. And right here, I like to use quotations instead of angular brackets, just so I know it's my own library. So that's back one directory, now into one directory, into include. And from here, it's entity.hpp. One last file we're going to need to include is the iostream library because we're going to be using one string, and that's going to be the location of the texture. All right, once we finish that, let's go class, and we're going to call this class player. Now, here's where we're going to use inheritance, so go colon, so we have to go public, use access specifier, and we have to say entity. Although it's not at all necessary to use polymorphism, it saves yourself a lot of lines of code. That's the only advantage to it. Make sure you end off that curl brace with a semicolon. Now, if we're adding a body, we're not actually going to be really adding a body. We're just going to be declaring that all these functions and members that belong to this class player exist. We're just telling the compiler that all this exists. Classes are defined in C++ source files, and classes are declared in C++ header files, which is an HPP file. So we're going to want to start with some private stuff, colon, and we're just going to create some floats. Now, we're going to actually use the M underscore convention, which it's actually commonly... I have noisy neighbors. Anyway, the M underscore convention is commonly and what it basically says is whatever this variable's name is, it belongs to the member, so the class we're working with. Simply just there to make sure you don't go cross eyed wondering what which x velocity you're dealing with. Let's start with some x velocity. We can just just initialize it. We're not gonna give it an initial variable right here. Float and m underscore y fell. That's all the private variables for now. So now let's use the public access specifier. And now we're just going to create a constructor, which a constructor happens when you call the function or class. Pretty much what it sounds like. It constructs the entity or whatever it is you're creating. And a constructor, it's not really a void or an integer or anything. So you don't say that. You just say just the name of whatever class it is. Open up some parentheses and the line with a semicolon. The parameters we're going to give it is starting with a constant string. And constant just says this variable will never change. Be sure it is an std colon colon string. And it's going to be a reference, so it's going to receive the memory address of whatever variable we're working with. So that we're passing by value, not by reference. We're going to call this texter file because this is the file location of where this texture is. Now we're going to need some initial variables, which is i underscore x. Just say the initial x position, i underscore y comma i underscore width. This is just the initial width, which can always change later. I just like to use i underscore to make sure I'd... it gets pretty complicated once you're dealing with this stuff. And for now, that's all we're going to need. We want to save this in the include directory, and we want to call this player.hpp, because not hop, hpp, save, good to go. Control in, create a new one, and let's start with hashtag include. And we're going to start by importing the sfml directory or library, sfml forward slash graphics.hpp and let's also include the iostream library that's all the official libraries we're going to need now let's just import our own libraries and we're going to start with dot dot back to go back a directory into the include directory forward slash and we're going to go with entity.hpp right the second one's pretty similar to it include uh, open up quotations dot dot forward slash include forward slash player.hpp. That's all the includes we're going to need for now. Go enter and go type player with a capital P, colon, colon. This might look a little bit strange. Open up some parentheses with some curly braces and hit enter. What this unary scope resolution operator does, the two colons there, 
what it says is that it, we're just editing some a class that's already been declared and the first parameter is a constant std colon colon string and it's also a memory address so it's a reference the memory address of this particular variable which we called texture file comma i underscore x comma it's just the initial position so i underscore y initial y i underscore w comma i underscore h now similar to what we did in the main dot cvp file right where we'd go shield texture dot load from file we're going to do pretty much exactly that over in the player.cbp. So let's go m underscore texture dot load from file. Yeah, I'm not the fastest typer in the world, but hey, it's okay. I remember when I'd be watching tutorials and I'd just see guys typing insanely fast. I don't know if they sped up the video. Some guys did and that was annoying because then I'd have to slow it down. I don't know, it just always made me feel like I wasn't good enough of a typer, but no matter how fast you type, don't worry about it. You'll get lost faster. One tip, try and type without looking at the keyboard. Although it's going to be really hard at first, it really teaches you to be a touch typist. And once you're a touch typist, you're a lot faster. I mean, this was me originally when I started typing. So these variables will be pretty simple. When height, height equals, let's just do a 500 by 500 square, equals when underscore width. Excuse me. Pretty bad, yeah. Okay, and let's give our vertices a primitive type. M underscore vertices dot set primitive type. And this is going to give a primitive type. For now, let's just use the SF colon colon quad, which is actually just a square, exactly what we had. But an important thing with programming is you don't want to push too far ahead without checking your code for bugs. Otherwise, it can be pretty frustrating to go through your whole code looking for a bug when you have 50 million of them. Let's give these vertices an actual size, m underscore vertices dot resize. This is just gonna give it an initial size, open up some parameters. And now let's multiply our initial width, multiplied by our initial underscore, you guessed it, height, multiplied by four, because there's four sides in a quad. Okay, so so far, let's go through these lines of code a quick second here. This line of code, this actually loads up the texture, exactly the same line of code here that loads up the texture from an actual file, a PNG file. This line of code here sets the primitive type, which can be anything. And this line gives the vertices the initial amount of space they take up. Here's where we actually plot out the points. So we go M underscore vertices. Here we can use some square braces to access each individual point in our vertex array. A fairly common or common enough way of doing squares in video games is it starts 0, 1, 2, 3. It honestly doesn't matter where you start, it just matters that you go in the clockwise order because it reads it clockwise like that. So now I go dot position because each member of this array has a position. Vertex arrays, they're pretty awesome. So we'll set position, set that equal to a SF colon colon vector 2F. Because the parameters, the first one again is just going to be like in the left hand corner. So let's just go initial underscore X comma initial underscore Y. That's all we need for the first one. Copy and paste it a few times because I won't waste your time with having to type it out. We'll need four because we have four points. So if the first one's here, it's just going to be the X and Y position right here. And the second one's going to be the X position plus the width. So for the second one, all we have to do is add the initial underscore width. And for the third one, we also need to add our initial underscore width. And what's different about this one is we also add our initial underscore height. And then for this one, we leave the X as is, and then we just plus initial underscore height. So our vertices inside our vertex array, they all have a point. We've plotted out a point to them, and now let's plot out the points for our texture. So go M underscore vertices, and open up some square braces, starting with zero dot text chords is what it's actually called. Set it equal to SF colon colon vector 2F. Open up some parentheses and inside there start with zero because we're dealing with just we're not dealing with the position of this in our imaginary world or the virtual world we're all dealing with this on the actual vertices so like i was saying with the gimp how we plotted out a point for each of these corners here now we're gonna have to do that except this time for the texture so the texture knows that this here for the texture this is zero zero right here 
zero, zero is right here, and then it goes up in magnitude from there. So hopefully that makes all sense so far. So just zero and zero for that because it's in the top left hand corner of the entity. Select that, control C, paste it three times. Now let's just go one, two, three. Number two is over on the right, so we need to give it the initial width of it. And for this one, we need to give it the initial underscore width, and we also need to give it the initial underscore height as well. And for this one, we just need the initial underscore height. Okay, so we've plotted out all the points. Let's just scale this up to size. So let's go M underscore transform, because the transform is where actually where we tweak this now created entities by moving him, by rotating him, stuff like that. So transform, and let's scale us by going dot scale, and open up some parameters. The first parameter is how wide is this going to be when it's scaled. So let's just go with 3.0 F. The F says that this is a floating number, don't convert it to an int or anything like that. Three, And let's keep it the same, 3.0 F, comma, and let's just give it the initial X and Y positions because when it rescales, it also asks us, okay, where do you want to put this on the screen as well? And we can just leave that where it was, I underscore Y. Since this is the constructor, it's also a good spot to set our X velocity equal to 0, 0.0 F. And let's also do the same thing for M underscore Y fell equals 0, 0.0 F. Take out the extra spaces and let's control save this. We're going to save this in dev, tutorial, C++, and let's save this in our source directory. And we're going to save this, just take out the suggested title. We can call this player.cpp, save. So our player C++ source file is now finished. So we can go back to main.cpp. Now I actually just need to import it. So go hashtag, or it's not really import it. Some people call it import. I guess I'm just used to Python and calling it an import, but we'll call it include because we're dealing with C++. We'll call it an include. And we're going to go with player.hpp. So now we've copied everything inside player.hpp into main.cpp. All right, the final two things we have to do is just draw this. So let's create this down here. We can just leave everything as it is. We're just gonna create another player just to make sure that this all works. So let's just go player with the capital P, player, and let's go with little player. And let's initialize it. So the initial parameters we're gonna give it is first a string, which is going to be the location of our player one.png, control C. And let's just paste that right in there but make sure you don't have double quotes. Now let's put it 200 pixels to the right and 200 pixels down. And I believe it is 60, a 60 by 60 square. All right, and now let's just draw it. So we're go window.draw, let's go window.draw, open up some parameters, and all we have to draw is just the player. Make sure you take out the extra P. Slight problem, when we created the player.hpp, it should be float because these are floats. In C++, you have to say what type of data type this is. Although data types do not technically exist because it's all memory at the end of the day, it's just a different way of handling it for ease of use. Control save. I have a feeling we, if we did that there, yeah, we copied and pasted it. Float, easy enough to fix. That's. I think that was the only error that I saw in the debugger. So that's probably all the errors we're going to have. Control save, and that should do it. One more thing, there is no just quad, it's quads. So save that. That should do it already. And we can see we have a pretty much identical copy of ourselves. Just just chilling out there. Let's move it a little bit so we can see it. So we go to go back to main.cbp, where we initialize it. Let's put it a bit farther. We can go with, let's go with a negative. Because we can actually put this at like a negative, oh, let's go negative 700, and I'll just be really far to the left. Because virtual worlds are infinite. Compile and learn that, and we should see our player way over to the left. Aha, uh -huh. there he is. So it looks exactly, pretty much just like an identical version of ourselves, except using a vertex array, and using polymorphism and inheritance. So, perfect. In the next video, we're going to be creating our player to be more lively so that we can actually control that player. And instead of using a sprite group, we're going to be using the vertex player. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, just leave it in the comment section. I'll be sure to get back to you as fast as possible. Mention it in the comment section. If I don't reply right away, I'm not ignoring you or anything. Right now, for YouTube notifications, I only get notifications on subscriptions. Even though I've checked the box that says get notifications for replies in comments. So what I have to do is I have to manually scroll through the community section in the YouTube Creator Studio. So anyway, I'll see you guys next video. Age Marty out.